During my childhood, I used to have a recurring dream where I was fast asleep in a ground floor room at my dacha, and suddenly, I would hear a distinct knocking sound coming from the dining room. The knocking pattern would be similar to the one produced when trying to open a cellar lid. Knock, 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 knock. I often wondered who would want to gain access to the cellar in the dead of the night. I yell from my bed, too afraid to investigate, Dad, is that you? As the lid continued to bang in the dining room, I realized that it wasn't someone trying to get in, but rather someone attempting to get out. The lid suddenly crashed onto the floor with a loud clap, and the unmistakable stench of the dungeon filled my nostrils. A cold, damp smell mixed with the scent of earth and decaying potatoes. I clenched my teeth and pulled the blanket tighter around me. Suddenly, I heard faint footsteps approaching my door. My heart racing. I was convinced that whoever or whatever was making those sounds was getting closer. And then I woke up, screaming and crying for my mother, repeating the same words over and over again. Mommy, he's here, he's here. When I used to go to the dacha, I always slept on the second floor and kept my ears open, listening for any sounds of the cellar lid knocking in the dining room. However, as I grew older, I found myself sleeping less and less. As a teenager, I completely forgot about my old habit, but even then, I still avoided sleeping downstairs whenever I visited the cottage. My younger sister, Vika, now slept in that room. She had access to a TV and great mobile internet service, which I invite. She was well aware of my fear of the cellar and would often tease me about it. Her jokes, such as the cellar is missing you, or the guy from the cellar is looking for you, would irritate me at times. One day, however, she decided to take her teasing to a new level and play a serious prank on me. During a stormy night in June, a terrifying scream echoed throughout our cabin, jolting me out of my sleep. At first, I thought it was just a dream, but the scream was repeated even louder and more bone-chilling than before. Despite my fear, I gathered my courage and decided to investigate. Vika and I were alone for the night, as our parents had yet to arrive for their vacation. I slipped on my slippers and cautiously made my way down the stairs, hoping that Vika was just watching a horror movie. She was a fan of all sorts of Hollywood rubbish. As I made my way up the stairs, I heard a knock-knock sound, and my blood ran cold. It was coming from the cellar, located not far from the stairs. I tried to call out for Vika, but my throat felt parched, and I couldn't get a sound out. The sound of thunder rumbled outside, making everything even more surreal. I wondered if I was still dreaming, but I knew I wasn't. This was like an old recurring nightmare I used to have, where the cellar lid would open and something unspeakable would emerge. Suddenly, I heard a loud clap followed by a ghostly boo-hoo sound, and then Vicky's shriek and laughter filled the dining room. I was both terrified and relieved that I managed to hold my bladder. I flicked the light switch on and found myself staring at my sister, who was emerging from the cellar. I couldn't believe that she would scream in a strange voice in the middle of the night and then deliberately sneak into the dark cellar to scare me. She chuckled and made a comment about my facial expression, but I was too shocked to react. As she climbed out of the cellar, I noticed something dark move near her leg. Was it just a shadow, or was there something else lurking in the darkness? I couldn't believe my sister's foolishness and decided to leave the cabin for some fresh air. I reasoned that my fear was probably just a result of stress and an overactive imagination, but my knees trembled at the thought of the cellar. I quickly made my way to the neighbor's bushes to relieve myself, as I didn't feel like crawling to the distant toilet, especially in the rain. The bushes were conveniently located right next to the gate. As I returned to the house, trying to shake off thoughts of the cellar, I heard Vika's frightened voice calling my name. However, I felt that falling for the same prank twice would be too much, so I ignored her call and proceeded up the stairs. But when I saw the ominous hole in the cellar lid, which I had tried not to look at but couldn't help myself, I recoiled in fear. I mustered up the courage to shout out, you again, in a trembling, feeble voice. But there was no response. As I was about to switch on the lights, a floorboard creaked behind me, and I could hear footsteps approaching me. The nauseating stench of the cellar reached my nostrils, and I couldn't help but think that he was near, very near. 
And suddenly, it dawned on me that this was not a dream, not a figment of my imagination. It was all real. The cellar banging, the sneaking footsteps, the foul smell of rotting potatoes. I remembered the times when I was a child, sleeping on the first floor, and heard those same noises. I could feel the fear resurfacing as I recalled the moments when he had come to the door, standing right there in front of me. During my eighth grade year, a peculiar incident occurred when my Dacha neighbor, who had offered me cigarettes and allowed me to smoke on his porch, divulged something bizarre to me. Smiling bashfully, as if he was aware that what he was about to say was absurd and preemptively apologizing, my Dacha neighbor, who had offered me cigarettes and allowed me to smoke on his porch, confided in me about a peculiar incident that had occurred the previous week. Someone called me from your cabin, he stated. I knew you weren't there because your gate was locked, and at first, I thought I was imagining it. But then they called me again, several times. It's odd, isn't it? If my grandmother were still alive, she would say that you have a housekeeper. I never saw my neighbor again after that, I thought, recalling the conversation about the mysterious calls. He had mentioned a house man, but it didn't seem like a big deal at the time. However, the memory of his words lingered in my mind. It was even more curious because he eventually sold his land. When I told my dad the story, he joked, were you scared of the ghost? I laughed along with him, but the situation didn't seem humorous to me anymore. Perhaps it was just a wrong number or a prank call. Standing in front of the switch with the sound of thunder and footsteps behind me, my only thought was to ignore the call. It came again, just like when I was a child, lying in bed as the creature from the cellar tried to trick me with my mother's voice. But even as a child, I was not fooled by the poor imitation. And now, ten years later, I refused to respond to Vicky's voice behind me. It became more insistent, then pathetic and finally contemptuous, but I stayed silent. As I watched the window lighten, I heard a strange creaking sound and the cellar lid snapped shut. The house fell into a terrifying silence as the thunderstorm outside subsided and the dawn slowly approached. With a deep breath, I turned on the light. The worst possible thought crossed my mind. Vicky wasn't home. I didn't need to enter her room to confirm that she wasn't there. She wasn't in any room of the house, nor was she anywhere else, and neither was that neighbor. I rushed out of the cabin and sat at the bus stop until noon shivering from the cold and the suspicious glares of elderly women. When my parents returned, they began searching for Vicky. They didn't believe in the housekeeper, nor did they believe that I was home that night. The police were called, and they searched for Vicky, along with search dogs and even the local gardeners. They even searched the cellar, but found nothing but bags of potatoes. As we drove away from the cabin for the last time, my heart was heavy with the memories of what had happened there. Mom sat in the front seat, looking sad, while Dad's face was set in a frown as he drove. Through the rearview mirror, I caught a glimpse of the new owner of the cabin, a pretty red-headed woman, standing at the gate with her son. The boy looked straight at me, his face solemn. A whisper escaped my lips, don't answer the call. As we drove down the alley, leaving behind the cabin and the secrets it held. I couldn't help but wonder if the new owners would experience the same strange occurrences that we had.